One of the cool yet practical things to do with smart lights is to turn them on when a person enters the room. Like this. I recently installed Shelly Smart Relays in most of my light switches. This allows me to control them from Home Assistant. But that's only half the story. To detect motion, you need a motion sensor. That's where the small but very capable multi-sensor from AOTech comes in. It's called the AOTech Multi-Sensor 7 and thanks to AOTech for providing this retail sample for our review. As always, all opinions are our own. The Multisensor 7 is a Z-Wave Series 700 device that supports the latest S2 security specification. It is the successor of the popular Z-Wave Multisensor 6 from a few years ago. That sensor was one of the very few that could act as a Z-Wave repeater when using USB power. I have one of those in a bedroom plugged into a USB charger for over 5 years now and it still works great. In spite of the 7 in its name, the Multisensor 7 has 6 sensors, just like its predecessor. Motion, Vibration, Temperature, Humidity, Light Levels, and Ultraviolet Index. Where the Multisensor 7 improves upon the 6 is in the 700 series Z-Wave support and better sensor sensitivity. For example, the motion sensor now has a stated range of 10 meters or 32 feet versus 5 meters or 16 feet earlier. The temperature and humidity measurement accuracy has also been improved. Physically, the 7 is quite similar to the 6. There is a bright multicolor RGB LED embedded on the front behind the translucent sensor cover. At the back, the Z-Wave action button has moved from the outside to the inside. Slide open the locking mechanism and you get access to the batteries, the USB port and this Z-Wave action button. The Multisensor 7 comes with a short user guide, a USB cable, a wall mounting kit and two CR123A batteries. Now let's look at adding the Multisensor 7 to a Z-Wave network. I recommend doing this in the same room as your final installation location, but before permanently mounting it, in case you want to fine tune the position later. Why? Because if you pair it near the controller, but then move it to the other end of your house, your sensor may not be able to reach the controller anymore, and it won't know about any neighboring routing devices. So the advantage of pairing it in the final location instead is that your sensor will find the best possible route to your Z-Wave controller through any neighboring routing devices and remember this ensuring reliable operation. You now need to choose whether you will use the batteries or the USB power option. Since most people will use the battery option, I chose that method too for this review. If you do change your mind after pairing the sensor, ideally you should do a factory reset and repair it with your controller. Let's put the batteries in now. When you first power up the sensor, the LED will fade in and out with a blue color, but it's easy to miss this while inserting the batteries. Because technically the sensor can work with just one battery, so the moment you insert the first battery, the LED will fade in and out in blue. But insert the second battery as well. Finally, it's time to pair the sensor with your Z-Wave controller. I use the Z-Wave JS add-on running on Home Assistant with my AOTech Z-Stick 7 USB dongle. So put your Z-Wave hub into inclusion mode. This is how I do it in Z-Wave JS. I recommend including the device with no security. So you don't need to enter the DSK pin. Tap the action button on the multi-sensor, just a short tap. It will light up in solid yellow as it enters pairing mode. 
It will then flash white and green for 2 seconds to indicate successful inclusion. Like this. But if it fails, it will be white and red instead and you should reset the sensor to factory conditions before trying again. You could use the included 3M double-sided sticky tape to mount the sensor, but I prefer the more permanent screw method. Make sure you follow the advice in the user manual regarding location, height and motion sensor detection range. To get the best results, avoid pointing the sensor at windows and take your time to think through all the possible ways people may enter and leave your intended detection area, thus triggering and re-triggering the sensor. This is crucial when using the motion sensor for presence detection and occupancy. I chose this particular location for the sensor because then it can monitor the widest possible area including the entry from the corridor and the kitchen. The sensor has a 120 degree field of view which helps a lot as well. Even though Z-Wave JS said that the sensor was paired and added successfully to my Z-Wave network, I couldn't find the sensor's entities under the entities list. So I used the reinterview node command with the reset security classes box ticked to force ZWave.js to identify the multi-sensor's capabilities. This worked and I could then view readings for all of the multi-sensors, six different sensors. All the configuration parameters also showed up. And this is what the device page looks like. I was keen to put the claimed 10 meters or 33 feet range of the multi-sensor to the test. The longest room in my house is my living room and I was able to position the sensor such that its maximum possible detection distance up to the corridor wall came to just around 10 meters. Perfect. So that's where I did this test. To make it even more of a challenge, the entry point to this living room would not be head on but off to the side of the sensor. This is as close to real life as a test can get. And the results were impressive. I measured the distance between the sensor and the point at which it detected motion, the green flash, at just under 10 meters, which is exactly the claimed figure for the motion sensor. So overall an excellent result here. Moving on to the temperature and humidity sensors. The readings are similar to those of the me air purifier that I have in the same room. Any discrepancy can be put down to them being at opposite ends of the room plus the 3 meters of height difference between the air purifier on the ground and the sensor being closer to the ceiling. The vibration sensor also serves the function of tamper detection. Unfortunately, this sensor uses a notification event rather than a binary sensor. But we can work with that. I created an automation to detect the Z-Wave CC notification event and then used that to turn a helper input boolean on and after a minute off. This simulates a vibration sensor perfectly. You may be wondering about the wireless range of the sensor. Looking at the Z-Wave JS network map, I can see that the Multisensor 7 found a route to the controller through the AOTech doorbell in the foyer around 10 meters away and two concrete walls away. 
Makes sense and that's what I would expect it to do. If you power the sensor over USB before Z-Wave pairing, it will act as a routing device as well. If you have AC or USB power at your installation point, I would recommend that. I used the sensor for over a month and the battery remains at 100%. The previous Multisensor 6 had excellent battery life with the batteries lasting over 2 years for me and I expect this new model to be similar. But time will tell. So what's great about the Multisensor 7? Well, you get 6 of the most useful sensors for just about any home automation scenario in one compact package. The most important sensors such as motion, temperature and humidity work very well, just as the others. The motion sensor especially is very sensitive and can truly detect people at a distance of 10 meters or 33 feet, which is stunningly good. Temperature, humidity, light level and UV reporting intervals can be changed from the default 240 seconds and can go down to 60 seconds on battery and even down to 1 second when on USB power. And it can also act as a routing device when powered over USB. You get the USB cable and a wall mount so there's no need to buy that separately. So overall this multi-sensor is very good value if you really need all these different sensors. While I didn't find any issues with this multi-sensor itself, the Z-Wave technology does seem to be going the way of Betamax, with Zigbee being VHS in this analogy. Yes, Z-Wave devices are more reliable and don't suffer from interference with your Wi-Fi network like Zigbee can. But it's getting close. I have set up a very stable Zigbee network at home without much effort. The biggest reason for Zigbee devices, popularity in my opinion, is that they are much cheaper because of the less strict certification process that device manufacturers need to go through. This also means there's far more choice in the market for consumers with familiar names like even IKEA joining the action. I expect a Zigbee equivalent to the Multisensor 7 to emerge in the near future. But for now, the unique combination of 6 useful sensors and the USB power option make the Aotech Multisensor 7 a compelling choice. So what do you think about the Multisensor 7? Leave your comments or questions below. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button if you found this review useful and subscribe for more DIY home automation videos featuring Home Assistant, Z-Wave and Zigbee devices.